How do you, my fellow creators of cool things from junk? You're looking at the next stage of the e-bike development. What I've got now is a 21 tooth pulley, a uh, M5 type, and a 72 tooth one. It gives me a ratio of about three and a bit ish to one. I've modified the alternator by drilling down through the front of it and tapping it to accept a bolt thread which I've then put in, tightened it up and then cut the head off to create this stud which secures that pulley stopping it from ever sliding off. A very good friend of mine who's very good with lathes and machines in general bored these pulleys out for me in order to make sure that they run true to avoid any chance of a wobble and he's done a fantastic job. They run so smoothly. It's fantasticable. Um, I need to fix a fair few things on this, as you can see. Uh, you'll see that it's just tack welded together. And I've had to do that because these bearing holders are only plastic. They're homemade on my CNC machine. Here's one of the bearing shells. Here's one that's assembled state with a 15mm bearing in it. And because they were in place during welding, I had to be super duper careful, put just little wee dabs here and there to glue it all together. Once I'm happy with the build and got it all running just the way I want, I can take it all to bits and then complete those welds, tidy it all up, and it will look nice. Um, the only problem at the moment, and I'll fix that by making adjustments to the mounts on both sides of the alternator. The frame is mounted here on the alternator and there, in the same way as an alternator is mounted in a car. But they're a bit too tight at the moment, and this belt is really quite rigid, which is not ideal. As a result, it runs kind of noisy-like. A lot of that noise will be gone once I reset the tension. That's equivalent to about 24 miles an hour, maybe faster, um, but when the bike's under load it will be a lot less than that for sure. Uh, but no worries, as long as it gets along at a comfortable pace I'll be happy. This shaft here is turned down to half an inch at this end, so this pulley can slide, uh, slide onto it, and that was done under quite a lot of pressure from a hydraulic press. It's 15 millimetres in diameter to pass through these bearings and at this point where I've mounted my homemade sprocket flange it's 16 millimetres, the original thickness or diameter of the shaft which actually came from a sack burrow. It's the axle between the wheels. <laughs> nice and cheap, readily available and uh, quite handy for this project. The uh, only wobbly part on this whole thing let's spin it up some more you can probably see it. It's not easy to spot, and of course the camera won't necessarily focus all that well. But you can see this pocket's just a little bit wibbly wobbly. Unfortunately, that's what happened when I welded it. I've made it all up on the lathe and it spun perfectly, but as soon as I put the hot melt glue on it, I think I buckled this a little old bit. So the next version of this flange will be a compression based system where this pocket sits on a concentric flange and is then pressed into place by another one or another ring that sits next to it and it kind of bolted on. I think that will fix it. At the moment this is all upside down. Uh, that's the only way I can actually hold it in the vise, you see. So the camera can actually see it and I can rev it up. But uh, in its final position on the bike, sits up the other way, chain runs round here to the rear wheel, and uh, that 
I think, will be the next part of the video where I show it mounted up on my bike and I have that wheel spinning around and around exactly like the wheels on the bus. <laughs> Ciao for now. Here it is on the bike. Mounted over the rear wheel was quite frankly, it was the only place I could practically uh, set it up. This is very rough and jury-rigged. Things are sort of just tack welded together and G-clamped to keep things from shifting around. This is my first test of the mechanism on the bike of pushing. So what I've done is I've made up this little old frame that couples back to the axles, to the rear axle that is, and it couples forward to the bike frame right there where the rear fork connects to the seat post. A whole lot of cleaning up needs to be done before this is in any way finished though. As, um, this assembly is actually out of rotation relative to the wheel, which means the chain is running on a somewhat less than straight path. But let's uh, put some spinach in there, eh? And go for a virtual ride to nowhere. Unfortunately, that's about as fast as it goes. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> goes faster. If I turn the faster knob some more, it will go faster. Just find the faster knob. Alright. That's 40 kph, or uh, 29 miles an hour. Of course, it'll never be that fast in reality, because when it's on the road, the extra load is going to slow it down to probably half that speed. The bike is wobbling around quite a lot too because that wheel isn't all that well balanced. But I don't think I'll ever be going fast enough for that to be a problem. Measure the speed of the wheel. Three hundred and nineteen turns per minute. Slow that down. It's so much quieter when it's not actually doing anything. <laughs> You've got to be careful not to overheat this power brick here, the uh, speed controller. I've got it hooked up to a fan, so if it does start to get hot, then yeah, I'll deal with it by switching on the fan. So this here. It's the first preview of the uh, final drive train, I guess you'd call it. Here we have a 21 tooth pulley going to a 72 tooth, so that gives us about three and a bit step down. Then behind that pulley we got a 14, I think it was, maybe a 16 tooth chain, the sprocket going down to our 48 tooth one here. So we've got about 3 to 1 there, which gives us about 9 and a bit to 1 step down ratio. <laughs> yep, it all just fits under the seat too. And what's cool is I can turn the seat this way and that, so I can steer without using the handlebars. No, I probably won't use that method, it's kind of wobbly. Okay, fellas and fella S's, Here's hoping you enjoyed this rather haphazard little demonstration. Ciao for now.